Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone and thank you for joining us today. My name is Muhammad Sumbul. This is the first session of our NIV Your Rights in Society series by Istanbul Youth Academy. And today I'm so excited to finally start the, the session. For those of you who don't know what Istanbul Youth Academy is, Istanbul Youth Academy is an organization for Muslim youth. Who want, to, who want to develop themselves professionally and also in their day-to-day -day lives with the various challenges faced navigating the world as young adults. As some of you may know, we have held previous sessions for guidance for you guys on pursuing careers in very underrepresented fields, professions like journalism, academia, politics, and advocacy. That's what we had so far with more to come. Keep following our Muslims in Industry series. But today, this new series, Your Rights in Society, what is it all about? Well, uh, we have all been there, right, living here in Istanbul and Turkey. The, there may be countless times where we were somehow cheated or felt it simply because we didn't know what to do or what our rights were, what the law was or how to challenge it. There are guidelines out there and laws to protect us. If only we knew them, life here would be much, much, much easier. Same goes for any of you who are Turkish nationals as well. Knowledge is power as the classic saying goes and we hope to provide the, the, we, we, we hope to provide that. And this wouldn't be possible without the attorneys we are honored to have today on board from the ACL Istanbul Law Firm, who will be leading the session in this series. And to introduce them and the session today, we have our very own Ahmed Bagalagel from the Istanbul Youth Academy team. Ahmed Salih Salim Bagalagel is our friend from Yemen who works at Al Moka. Research Center as the head of translation and activities units. Ahmed has been living in Turkey for 10 years and has been engaged with social right issues and activities for the foreigners. The focus of his work is MENA region and security. So without further ado, Ahmed, take it away, please. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, Muhammad. My name is Ahmed Bagalagil, and I'm pleased to be with you guys tonight moderating this session. As Muhammad mentioned, these sessions are crucial for living here in the city. The, each session aims to equip you guys with the guidelines and the know-how uh, and the know-how to deal with day-to-day -day different issues relating living in Turkey, both as a foreign resident and as a Turkish citizen. The attorneys leading these sessions and who are we honored to collaborate with are Ahmed Najib Arslan and Mahmoud Sayyid Arslan, both partners in the law firm of ALC, Istanbul and Altunizade. They are both holding various, <clears throat> they both will be holding various sessions for, from guiding residency, negotiating work and housing contracts, work employment issues, insurances, dealing with the police and numerous other day-to-day -day problems. The first session tonight is about the talk of every foreign who lives here, residency, and that dreaded immigration place in which in Turkey, which we call the Gucci Darasi. Leading tonight's session, Mahmoud Said Arslan. Welcome, Brother Anhush Galdins. Can you hear us? Thank you very much, Mohammed and Ahmed. It is an honor for me to be here with you tonight. I'm also very happy to become a part of Istanbul Youth Academy. Oh, that's fine. Uh, I find your work here very valuable and important. Thank you. Thank you. We are honored to have you. I would love to give a, a brief bio by you, Mr. Arslan, if you'd let me. Uh, please. Yeah. Thank you very much. Mahmoud, Mr. Arslan, attorney at law, graduated from Istanbul Shehe University, Faculty of Law in 2016. 
He worked with Professor Dr. Jamal Shanle as part of his international arbitration team. He joined the, uh, he joined the ACL Istanbul as a partner in 2017. He earned his master's degree from Galatasaray University, defending his thesis on the terms of reference in ICC arbitration and, <clears throat> current, and currently is doing his PhD in Istanbul University. He holds, um, sorry, he, his fields of expertise are uh, including international commercial arbitration and investment arbitration, international construction, international construction law, and international contracts, public predicament law, startup law, and immigration law. Mr. Arslan speaks Turkish, English, and he has intermediate proficiency in Arabic. So the format tonight, guys, will be in, Mr. Arslan will include us conducting an 101 presentation with you on everything there is to know about Turkish residency and the nationality. Then the floor opens to you guys to ask questions. So we kindly please ask you to make your questions only on the, on the things we'll discuss tonight. Everything else will be discussed in the further other sessions, inshallah. Feel free to send your questions before we start, if you have some. And without a further ado, I would love to give the floor to you, Mr. Arsene. Uh, thank you very much again. Before starting, please excuse if I'm a little bit excited about this. Uh, a few years ago, I was telling my friends from uh, high school that um, a 101 legal course should be added to Turkish high school curriculum as well, because after the age of 18, after we graduate from high school, we all become responsible and capable subjects of the law. And we enter into business life, we face with government offices, employers, customers, etc. And in every stage, we, whether we are aware of that or not, we actually deal with the law. And in order to avoid the bad face of the state government or protect ourselves from the villains, uh, the people in bad faith, basic level of legal knowledge is, I think, necessary. Uh, it's my great pleasure to be a partner of this project, which will help foreigners living in Turkey, especially in Istanbul, to learn about the basic rules of uh, the Turkish government. I hope uh, projects like this will be organized by many other institutions and this legal knowledge about these issues will be spread. Uh, and again, I, I would like to thank uh, Istanbul Youth Academy for giving us and my firm ACL Istanbul this great opportunity. Uh, tonight will be the first session of the program, which we hope to continue for many more weeks. For the initial session, uh, we thought that it will be appropriate to talk about Göçüders, the immigration department, uh, residence permits, and Turkish nationality. Because if you are willing to stay in Turkey for more than a holiday period, then Göçüders will probably be the first institution that you will face in Turkey because uh, it's the institution that issues uh, the residence permits. If uh, it is important because if you set your affairs straight with Gucci Darcy, then hopefully you will face less or maybe no problems with other Turkish institutions. However, if you are in bad terms with Gucci Darcy, uh, it will always be a headache for you and they might even force you to leave the country. And so today, there are actually two parts of my uh, presentation. We will firstly talk about residence permits. Uh, then we will talk a little bit about nationality applications. Uh, the first part I think will be more relevant for newcomers and those who face uh, some problems with Gushi Darcy. Uh, I guess, most of our audience is already familiar with Gucci Darius and they have a little bit background and knowledge about the residence permit applications. They either do it by themselves or through some agencies. And I think the second part will be more relevant for uh, those of you who are planning to live a longer part of the, your life uh, in Turkey. But uh, I would advise actually to give importance to second part uh, for all of the audience, because this country I think has an interesting charm and people 
generally tend to stay longer than they are initially intended to. Um, so this will be a one-on-one presentation and I will give the basics and some practical advices. I omitted some of the information that might be related uh, with this issue because um, because this is not a legal course and I, I, I try to focus on the issues that uh, you will most probably face in your lives. Um, on the paper, uh, Turkey has a straightforward and well-designed system for residence permit applications. However, um, we should note that Göçüder said the immigration department uh, does not always follow what is written in the regulations and guidelines. Um, also, they are a progressing institution, so almost every month they change uh, a little bit of their procedure. So it is always, I think, helpful to benefit from the experiences of your peers. You should ask lots of questions to lots of people, and you should take benefit of uh, the consultants and experts as well. Now, uh, let's dive into topics. And good luck. I would like to share a little presentation with you. Uh, please let me open it. I guess you can now see my presentation, right? Yes, yes, we can see. Okay. So I already talked about the topics that we are going to talk about today. We will talk about residence permits and then citizenship applications. Uh, there are actually six types of residence permits. However, uh, I will only talk about five of them because the sixth one is uh, for the victims of women trafficking. And if you are in that kind of situation, you should definitely get some uh, legal help and engage with a lawyer. So I don't think that it will be relevant for this presentation. So the types of residence permits are short-term residence permit, family residence permit, student residence permit, long-term residence permit, and humanitarian residence, residence permit. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the features of each type. Short-term is the general type. Um, it's, it has lots of subcategories and it is issued for up to two years. And if you are not fit for other types, you will probably uh, be fit to short-term uh, residence permit. If actually, if you are not a tourist and if you have a meaningful uh, reason to stay in Turkey, then you will most probably fit into one of these categories and you should be able to get a residence permit. And family residence permit uh, is for the people who has who have a, a family member by family member i mean their spouses or parents uh, who are turkish nationals or who have a residence permit in turkey prior uh, to their application it can be issued for three years and um, if you have a short-term application you can also transfer to family uh, family residence permit as well. And the third type is the student residence permit. It's generally issued for one year. Uh, this is mostly relevant for university students and some high school students. It should be renewed each year. Then we have long-term residence permit. Uh, actually, this is the best type. It gives almost all the rights that Turkish nationals have except for voting and going to military service. Uh, to be able to apply for this type of residence permit, you should have stayed in Turkey for at least five years um, before applying for long term. And lastly, we have humanitarian uh, residence permit. This is generally uh, designed for the people who 
who actually came to Turkey because they had some problem with their uh, governments in their hometowns. Um, if, if you think that you will face some persecution in your uh, country or if you are um, convicted in your country, uh, then you can apply to humanitarian um, residence permit. Also, uh, as we will discuss later on, if you have problem with getting uh, the other types of residence permits, then uh, you might have a chance to apply for a uh, humanitarian residence permit. It's not preferred because uh, it gives less rights than the other types of residence permits. Uh, so the application process for each type is similar. Uh, of course, some documents that you need to collect uh, might differ. Um, but I would like to continue with showing the uh, types of subtypes of short term residence permit. As I said, if if you have a meaningful purpose for staying in Turkey, it, you will definitely find uh, a category that, that suits you. You can say that I'm going to do a scientific research in Turkey, then you can apply for this type. If you own an apartment uh, for housing purposes, then you can also apply uh, for short term business permit. If you are willing to do business, then again, there's a special type for that. If you are going to attend a job training or if you are a graduate from a Turkish university or uh, if you are going to attend a Turkish language course, then for uh, these are just examples of some types of short term business permits. There are some other types as well. Uh, the most important one is this touristic one because it's the most uh, commonly used subtype of short term residence permits. Generally, if you if you have, I guess, if you have a residence permit in Turkey, it's like maybe 70% is touristic. Um, because if you have any other reason, you just say that I'm going to be a tourist in Turkey. And generally, uh, it's the easiest way to get a short term residence permit. Because for all the other types, you need to show some additional documents um, proving your purpose of stay. But for touristic residence permit, you just need to have some generic documents uh, that the government requires. As I said, the application process is uh, straightforward and it's generally, the, the basics are the same for all types of residence permit applications. We start with collecting the documents. Uh, maybe if you have uh, done a residence permit application previously, you probably you saw this pink file. You just get uh, this pink file, then uh, you print your documents and put it into that and you take it to the appointment. So uh, the documents they require might differ uh, depending on the type of residence permit you are applying to. But generally, they need a document with, which shows where you will stay during your residence period. It, it can be a rent contract. It can be a title deed of the apartment you own. Or if you have a family member or, or a sponsor in Turkey, then uh, they can issue uh, a letter of undertaking from the notary public. Um, also, you need four photographs and you need an insurance for foreigners. Uh, this is for uh, guaranteeing that you will be able to cover your uh, medical expenses in case you have any, any um, sickness during your stay in Turkey. You can obtain this insurance uh, from any agency. It, it is a special uh, policy designed for foreigners for this purpose. Uh, it costs, depending on your age, of course, or your med medical background, it generally costs starting with 500 TL and it goes up to 2000 TLs. 
and you need your uh, passport photocopy. And if you are applying to family residence permit, then you need you definitely need a marriage certificate. So for the typo, and you if you you are applying for your kids as well, then uh, you need a parental consent from your uh, suppose, and you need birth certificates and in some types of residence permit applications, uh, the Goethe DRC asks for a proof of your financial resources. This can be a bank statement or, uh, or any other relevant type of document. Uh, they generally ask this for long-term uh, residence permit application. And also in some uh, cases they ask for your uh, criminal background and this is generally provided by a policy court from your country from your uh, home country then after collecting the documents you just hit this url which is e-ikamet.goch.gov.tr aikamet.goch.gov.tr there uh, you will see a page like this and you just hit i lodge an application for residence permit for the first time and if you are trying to extend then there is another section for that then you follow this website it gen actually gives all the information you need for your application it also uh tells you the documents that you should collect before coming uh, for your appointment after you fill this online form uh, you you need to make the payments for uh, the residence permit fees and you can do it either by uh, going to the tax office you will show the number of your application that you take from the online system or uh, you can visit this uh, website as well this is the uh, website of the interactive uh, tax office and there uh, there's a section which says exactly this in turkish uh, this website by the way does not have english version but you can maybe google translate that uh, it, there's a section which uh, reads like Harch ve değerli kağıt bedeli ödeme. There, uh, when you hit this section, there is a modal opening. And here uh, you say, I would like to pay for my residence permit fees. Then you can make the payment online. And after you make the payment, uh, you will get an SMS or uh, the online system will tell you a date for your appointment. At the date of your appointment, you should show up yourself. You should uh, go to the address that uh, the online system or the SMS tells you. And you cannot change the date of appointment or you cannot uh, postpone it. Uh, so if, if you have like a health problem that day if you are sick that day you should uh, definitely take a medical report for that uh, in short you should just go to the appointment but unfortunately generally there are lots of line in front of Goshi Darcy so uh, be prepared to um, spend hours in that line before you are able to actually give your documents actually if you have a lawyer uh, who helps you for the application. Uh, generally, they have a special line for lawyers and you don't have to wait too much. And I'm grateful for that personally. And at the date of appointment, you take the line and then you give the documents to an official. And there they just look at your papers and if they need an additional document generally tell you there. And if there is a problem with your documents, they generally tell that as well. But uh, even after the appointment, even if you if they don't tell anything uh, during the appointment, they might send an SMS uh, or an email 
saying that you need to submit additional documents. And if you get such an SMS, do not miss that because it's really important and there's no remedy for uh, missing that SMS. After you make the uh, application, you should regularly check your check the SMS section of your uh, mobile and your email as well. And after you submit everything, after, and if you don't have any missing documents, generally they send your card uh, via PTT, uh, the Turkish official post office and they send it to your address and if they cannot find you you can take it from the bench and finally you get a card looking like this one uh, and it will state uh, the term of your residence permit okay uh, this is actually um, the outline of the process and here i would like to talk uh, about some important aspects um, if if you change anything uh, regarding your situation if you change your address if you change uh, your name if you somehow change your uh, birth date or if there is a mistake with your birth date if 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 there is an update with any of your information you should definitely visit uh, the Goshi Diocese in Vatan Caddesi in Istanbul or uh, the general center in the city you are living. And you should update your information. This is really important because otherwise uh, they might say that there is a contradiction in your information and they might reject your application. Also, when you get the card, um, please take a note, put a reminder, and you should definitely uh, make an application for extending and renewing your residence permit in its last 60 days. And there is a specific rule for Istanbul. Uh, if you are a newcomer or if you are uh, not living in a senior or party, you cannot make an application uh, for staying there. Uh, they only accept uh, the extension applications there and then, then and they do not accept new applications for these districts because of uh, the population density. And you can make, if you think that um, your conditions have changed and you are fit to a different type of uh, residence permit, then you can make an application uh, for transferring to a different type. For example, let's say uh, that you were a student, but you had a problem with school or you just graduated, then you should uh, make an application for short-term requirement. And also a little note about this short-term requirement. As I said, um, Touristic residence permit is the most common type. However, uh, it is not the most advantageous one because uh, as we will talk later on, if you are uh, planning to make an application for Turkish nationality, they do not accept uh, prior touristic uh, residence permit. We will talk about this later on. And lastly, I check my notes. Uh, what if I am rejected? Yes, this is important because um, although uh, you, even though you do everything correct, the Gochidars, the immigration department has discretion to whether or not uh, accept your application. They don't have to state any reasons, they might just decide to uh, cancel your application or reject it. And if they do so, uh, they will generally ask you to leave Turkey in 10 days. If you not leave in that period, then they might put an entry ban on you and you might not be able to visit Turkey again for a while. And the, the, the term of uh, the entry ban actually differs 
based on the situation, but it can start from one month and it can go up to five years or uh, it can be endless as well. And although our topic is the residence permits, Syrians have a special situation because they are uh, entitled to apply for a temporary protection status. Uh, it is not a residence permit, but it actually allows them to stay in Turkey and have the rights uh, that residence permit holders generally have. Uh, and if you Sometimes you might hear that uh, the, the Gucci Diaries, the immigration department put a code on you or they put an entry ban on you or there is a deport decision about you. Uh, in, if you hear any such thing, you should definitely get legal help. You might uh, need to issue a lawsuit regarding these situations or you might simply uh, leave the country and then come back. And I think this was uh, the general uh, outline. And if you have any questions about this, maybe we can talk about them uh, at the end of uh, the session. And if you are uh, willing to read more about residence permits, these are some official uh, sources. This is the first one uh, is the website of the immigration department. And the second one is the website of uh, the Turkish Investment Agency. You can visit them. Those are uh, actually beautiful websites. They have lots of information and they have English versions as well. You can visit them anytime and get some uh, information there. Now I would like to move on to uh, nationality applications. Actually, uh, there are uh, more than three types for uh, nationality applications. However, I don't think that uh, the rest of them will be relevant for this audience. If, if you have a special situation, like if you are an ex-Turkish national who, who lives in Europe, or if you cancelled your Turkish nationality due to some reason and want it back, then uh, there are special. But uh, basically, for most of uh, the foreigners who came to Turkey uh, after they, they were born, uh, these three types are relevant. The first one is acquiring Turkish nationality uh, by residing in Turkey for one five years. Uh, prior to application. The, what you do actually is to go to uh, the Directorate for um, the Population Affairs and Nationality Affairs. And this is not Gochi Diarisi. Their headquarters are very close to each other, but this is a different directorate. And you make a one-page application where you just give your passport information and they do a background check on you. Uh, generally, the police department conducts this and they check your records uh, of residency. And if you have lived in Turkey in the past five years, and if you did not leave the country for more than six months, then they generally say that, okay, you. Um, you check for the initial requirements and then you move to the second stage. Uh, what you should be aware is that um, if your residence permit was uh, a touristic type, then they do not accept it. We had one client who was uh, in Turkey for more than 30 years, but they did not allow him to get a residence permit on this grant because they had touristic uh, residence permit like three years ago, something like that. Uh, so this is really important. And the other type is uh, the 
marriage you if you are married to a turkish national for more than three years uh, you can apply for turkish nationality and they actually conduct a background search and they come to your house and they check whether you are really in a marriage or you are just doing it on paper so they do not accept fake marriages these are the general types and there is exceptional way uh, but actually uh, in practice exception became the rule uh, because uh, nowadays lots of foreigners uh, acquire turkish nationality through investment and the last type is the government decision even if you have if you don't have any um, investment in turkey even if you do not have any real link to turkey the government, uh, President Erdogan might say that, okay, I want to grant Turkish nationality to this person because uh, he might benefit our country. The, this is the, um, the general example for this is Naim Suleyman, or maybe you heard about it, him. He was a sportsman and he had uh, a different nationality, but he had Turkish origins and uh our government said that he will represent us in uh the sport competitions then they granted him turkish nationality let's say if you are a singer if you have exceptional records regarding art music uh, sports then the government might decide to grant you uh, an exceptional nationality but uh, nowadays the most common type is investment by uh, uh, the nationality application to making investment in Turkey. And we will talk a little bit more about this. I'm going to explain the procedure and the grounds for that. Um, it actually requires uh, at least 250,000 um, uh, US dollars of investment or it might go up to 500,000. Okay, I will quickly read the grounds for um, this application. If you make a capital investment of uh, USD 500,000, or if you acquire a property in Turkey, which is worth at least 250,000 uh, US dollars. And if you commit yourself that you will not sell this property for three years you will keep that then uh, you might be entitled to make an application for Turkish nationality if you create jobs for at least 50 people then you are also entitled uh, there is no certain criteria for uh, determining how you how you create jobs for 50 people but uh, the ministry has discussion basically if if you own a company which has 50 employees then they generally give that and you can also deposit uh, 500 US dollar 500,000 US dollars to the bank for three years or you can purchase government bonds or you can purchase real estate investment funds or venture capital investment fund shares and how the process goes uh, I'm actually uh, going to tell the process for uh, application to acquiring property because uh, this is the most common type. You, when you choose the property that you want to buy, you firstly go to an independent expert company and they prepare a report and the, if the report says that the property is worth more than 250,000 uh, US dollars, then you can uh, continue with your purchase. This doesn't have to be one property, by the way. You can purchase, let's say, three different properties. And the, if the total amount is more than 250,000, then you are still going to be eligible for uh, the citizenship application. 
after you take your report, you go to the uh, land registry with the seller and you make uh, the payment. You should make the payment from um, a bank. You cannot do it uh, with cash. And I would strongly suggest the, to use the land registry's escrow system. Uh, the, the system is very cheap and it allows you the most secure way, actually. Uh, if you use this system, the title is automatically transferred uh, to you when you, at the moment you make the payment. Uh, this is the most secure way and it prevents lots of scams as well. And after you purchase the deed, you go to the land registry again and you take a certificate of eligibility uh, which shows that this property is uh, usable for citizenship application then you prepare your documents and then you go to Cevizliba in Istanbul and there is a special joint office there uh, for specifically designed for this type of applications and you give your documents and you uh, you make a special residence permit uh, application for the purpose of acquiring nationality and if you buy one property your family members can benefit from that as well and they can acquire Turkish nationality as well and after you make the application it generally takes three to four months uh, that until it is finalized. Uh, and there is a beautiful guide about this uh, nationality applications in the website of Turkish Investment Agency. Uh, I put the URL and you can check from uh, their website as well. And that's all for me tonight. Um, and I will be happy to uh, hear questions if you have any. You can please uh, also, if you have questions or if you come up with questions after this session, you can always reach us through our website or through our email or phone number. And you are always welcome to visit us and have a coffee with us in our office in Altunizade. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I think I can end the presentation, then can dive into the questions. Is it okay, Ahmed? Yes, yes, thank you, first of all. Thank you very much for this uh, fruitful uh, presentation. It was uh, insightful and it was full of uh, information that we really needed. Uh, there, are, there are some questions we've received earlier. So I think we should start with those. Uh, should, th there are some uh, questions in the chat. Should I read them or you will select from them? No, no, no. Um, we are planning to read them all. Uh, I can okay. read them for you. Um, uh, okay, please go. Because I didn't have a chance to read them. You... Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. So the first question is from Umar Bakri. He asked if the marriage happened outside Turkey, Will it be needing a registry in Turkey? Also, if it's a translation needed, or is it enough? Uh, if the marriage is um, made happened outside Turkey, it's still valid. However, of course, you need to register that, but you can register that after the three years uh, is completed. You can register the marriage after the three years is completed. Yes. Uh, but they, I specifically asked this to this joint office in Cevizliba uh, we, about for one of our clients, and they say that you should uh, register the marriage in Turkey. I see. Uh, there's a related question, a follow-up question to this. Uh, if the marriage happened outside Turkey in the three years, just is it uh, similar to the previous one when you mentioned you live in Turkey five years and the six months break? Uh, no. It uh, doesn't have a residence requirement. Uh, if you live outside Turkey, you can 
still apply uh, for Turkish national to on the grounds that you are married to a Turkish national for two years. I see. Okay, the second question is from Sara. If you want to get a residency in Istanbul and then you decide to move to another city, do you have to notify the Idarese in the new city? If you change your address, you should definitely uh, let them know. Uh, th this might be problematic regarding uh, this temporary protection for Syrians, or if you apply for asylum in Turkey, they generally allow you to reside only in one city. They register in you into one city. Yeah. Uh, then in those cases, uh, they generally do not allow you to transfer your uh, address to another city. But for short-term, long-term family residence permit, you, there's no restriction. You can uh, change your address whenever you want, and you should definitely update, update your address information with Gucci Oh, I see. So you don't have to go to the Nufus Mudurdu or the... You, you actually go to uh, Nufus Mudurdu first, then you change your address, but also you should notify Gucci Dares because they have separate records. Okay, I see. Um, this is uh, a general question. It says, explain how Syrians under temporary protection status can acquire Turkish citizenship. They say it takes not so long, uh, not so many years. Which ground does it fall into? Which ground does it fall into? Can a, a Syrian apply on, to, for a citizenship under the Turkish temporary protection card? Uh, Syrians actually. Um can apply for Turkish nationality after a certain period, but generally uh, this, they do not accept uh, the temporary protection period as, uh, as a residence and they do not give uh, after five years the residence, uh, the nationality. Uh, however, I don't know the details. Uh, I hear from many clients that especially those Syrians who, are, who lived there, uh, most of their residents in Turkey in uh, the refugee camps acquired Turkish nationality. Uh, but I don't know the details for that process actually. Nice. But uh, normally if you are residing in uh, Istanbul uh, and if you have temporary protection, it does not allow you uh, to it does not grant you to the right to apply for Turkish nationality. You should first uh, transfer to short-term application or family uh, residence permit. Mm -hmm. Then after five years, you can make your application. Okay. So um, what I want to say, the government sometimes from time to time, uh, they have special policies and they might decide to give uh, some privileges to certain groups of people. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, we didn't discuss it today, but uh, nowadays Gucci does a grant uh, long-term residence permit to Uyghur people uh, from East Turkestan, but it's not regulated under the law, but mm -hmm. the directorate, they just decide to give them. I see. Yeah. Oh, that's a beautiful thing to hear. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's why I said they change the procedure a lot. Uh, so you should, if you have a question, you should definitely go to an expert about that. And you actually, as lawyers, we regularly visit Gechi Daresi. And if, even if we know something, uh, when we get a question, we try to confirm the answer from Gechi Daresi because they change it a lot. Ah, I see. Yeah, I think we have faced this quite a few times. I understand it. Yeah. Um, we do have a few of our friends who raise their hands. We can give them the floor to ask. Then we can go back to also some written questions. Let's start with Lukman. Lukman, can you unmute yourself? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hello, Mr. Mahmoud. How are you doing? Thank you very much. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. I can't see your face, but I'm not sure if I'm supposed to. <laughs> Hold a second. Uh, 
Anyway. So, uh, anyway. <laughs> um, I have a very quick question. For example, um, I think you have explained uh, to us regarding the long-term permit, right? Like, um, how is the application and everything? Because, for example, I don't really want the nationality, uh, the nationality, because my country does not allow me to 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 have, uh, you know, dual nationality. Okay. But I'm very happy if I can have the Turkish uh, the long-term permit. Because I believe it is um, has uh, how do you call that a uh, non-finite term, right? Like you can stay however you want. How, how, yeah. how like uh, actually the, the, that's great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I will definitely advise if you can get that. So maybe you can explain to us a bit about this application or the terms and you know the requirements for okay, this long-term. Okay, let's um, start again with that. Uh, they say the rule says that you should stay in Turkey for five years in the last eight years. <laughs> okay, let me read from the regulation. Uh, the exact thing. I'm checking from the website of Gucci yeah, That's fine. Take your time. It says having continuous residency in Turkey for at least eight years. Uh, also, you should note that if pre if you previously had a uh, student residence permit, uh, actually, um, I, I might have to correct myself. Um, five years is for nationality and uh, eight years for long-term permit. Uh, if, if you um, had student residence permit, uh, they calculate it as half. Let's say uh, you stayed in Turkey for, for four years with a student residence permit, then you stayed for four years uh, with short-term residence permit. You might think that you are eligible, but the Gucci DRC calculates that uh, you that uh, the four-year res student residence permit as two years, then they add it up to uh, uh, four years short term, then it makes six years, uh, Then, which means you still need to reside in Turkey for uh, two years more. Does, do you understand, Dukman? Does that make sense to you? Yeah. And... Okay. Um, is there any, do you want to ask anything else? And uh, about this long term, it uh, having touristic economy mm -hmm. is not a problem. It is a problem for uh, nationality, but it's not a problem for um, uh, long term economy. And about the grants, recently they started to ask for uh, a criminal record. Mm -hmm. And it's it's sometimes um, problematic to get that from, uh, for example, United States. So basically, if you have stayed long time, I mean eight years in Turkey, then you can apply for long term. The application is very similar to short term. Uh, you just do the online application, then uh, you go to Gucci DRC and you fill, uh, you, you give in your documents, then they call you again and ask you to bring additional documents if, you, if uh, they need them. And after a while, they issue the uh, e-commit card, residence permit card. It's pretty much the same, actually. Okay. Is it clear, Mr. Lokman? Or if you have any other questions. I think I think Lukman is a he, he understood the question. He's texting. So okay. Mr. Mahmoud, uh, sorry. Um I'm gonna give you some example, yeah. My personal example. Yeah. Uh, I mean I, this is very, very clear actually, but uh, let's say uh, I was a student for four years, right? Mm -hmm. 
Yes. So the government consider only two years for out of that four years, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I have to live in Turkey for another six years. Sorry. Yeah, six years. Yes. In order to get this um, long term application, right? Yes. And how about the? Let's say I've been living for seven years in total, like four years from the student permit, student visa, then uh-huh. another three years. Let's say two years from tourist tourist permit, and another one from let's say how do you call that working permit. How many years do I have to live as um as a foreigner here right now? Okay, uh, then you you need to stay an additional three years. You have to complete it to eight years. Does it matter if I live as a tourist or like, you know, a working permit? If you have a valid residence permit, then it counts. I see. Okay. Okay, that's good then. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, we have also Arsida wants to ask a question. Arsida, can you join? Just give me one second. Okay. Um, hi again, and thank you for the for the session, it was very insightful and very informative. Uh, my question was again about the residence permit after you being a student. Okay. So, um, if you are a student for a long term, for something like 10 or 12 years, and then you get the touristic ikamet, uh, are you still eligible to apply for it? Or what should we do in this case? Like, should we apply for it before getting a touristic ikamet? You mean you talk about nationality or just residence? Nationality, nationality. Uh, let's say that you were in Turkey for 12 years with a uh, student residence permit. Then it counts for six years yeah. and you are eligible for apply, for directly applying to Turkish nationality. However, after 12 years, if you get short-term touristic residence permit for even one day, uh they say that you're not eligible for nationality mm-hmm. you should start the day count from the beginning oh my god so do you have to apply for it before starting your like for example i applied now for my touristic comment but i didn't get it yet i'm waiting for it do okay. i have to apply for nationality before getting it uh you can yeah you should do that Actually, you should do the application before uh, getting your account. I also have another question that is related to this. Uh, when you apply for nationality, they also ask for your Sigorta. Yes. Um, that basically, for example, usually you must know it that most of the foreigners, they go for private Sigorta just to yes. pay less. Um, do, they, do we have to pay uh, for the state Sigorta? Uh, uh, as much as to cover these whole years or is there such a rule because as far as i know there is such a rule but i'm not very sure about that you actually uh, need the insurance only for residence permit once you are uh, a national you, you are not required to have an insurance mm-hmm. uh, so uh, you don't have to cover uh, all the years that you are going to spend as a national you just have to Back, backwards like the years that you have been for example you lived here oh, no, no no not at all oh okay okay thank you you're welcome okay we will uh, take a written question then we'll ask uh, sara to join us then ibrahim will you be the last one uh, i'm sure ibrahim has uh, some hard questions maybe so uh, the question goes if I'm currently for uh, living four years and on a work resident permit and have one more year in my fifth year, can I apply now or should I wait till my fifth year is finished? Uh, can you repeat the question again? I'm sorry. I, I... The, question is, the question is, a person lived here four years on, res- on a work resident permit. Uh, okay. Now he's in going to his fifth one. Okay. Can he apply now or should he wait? Till the fourth one is completely finished and he started the fifth. Um, he should wait until the fifth year is uh, completed because when you do the application, they, ju- uh, they conduct a background search and they also conduct a day count. 
and they check five years prior to the application. So if you apply before completing five years, then uh, they will not accept it. I see. Uh, also, Sarah, she has a question. Sarah, would you like to join and ask it? Okay. Hello. Hello. Hi. Thanks for the talk today. It was quite beneficial. So my, my question is that what resident permits can you actually apply for citizenship on afterwards? Is it on every permit except the touristic one? So I can be here as a student for five years and apply, or I can be doing business for five years and apply. Um, I could have a property maybe for five years, even if it's not um, the 200, even if it's not the investment of $250,000. But if I have a property under um, that amount and I'm living here for five years, is it possible to still apply for residency on these on these bases? Exactly. Um, if it's if your residence permit was not touristic or humanitarian residence permit, uh, then you can make the application. OK, well, that's great. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Uh, by the way, I should mention that uh, if you choose the way with the investment, it takes generally three to four months. But if you follow the general procedure and if you apply based on uh, residing in Turkey for five years, the application process takes much longer. It can take up to two years. Mm. Uh, this is I see. a so you actually disadvantage. You're actually looking at maybe about seven years then before you get citizenship. Yeah. So is it easy to change between residencies? Like if I have a touristic one, then I want to change it to like a business one or a student one. Is it easy to do that? Or do you uh, have yeah. to leave the country first? Yeah, it is uh, definitely easy. It's like a normal uh, application for extension. Okay, great. Well, thanks for clarifying that. Uh, in the website of Gürtü Dersi, E e comment, uh, there is a section that I want to transfer between the different types. You can just hit there and follow the procedure. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'll read a question okay. that's been asked to us online before we started the before we started the session. The question goes. I want to ask about my situation. I've been living here for more than 12 years in Turkey with one year being in my country, 2009 to 2017, a student comment. And I stayed in one year around 2017, 2018, 2018, 2021, touristic comment. My comment ended in May. And because some of the problems in my passport, I had two appointments and explained it with a petition and it got rejected for my request. My last appointment is on the 25th. Um, it's almost six, I've been almost six months without resident permit. What would you suggest for me to do and how can I get, how, how can I get more nationality or long-term permit? Uh, it's a difficult situation. Um, probably if you are not going for the investment method, uh, you are currently not eligible for uh, nationality because you already took um, touristic ECAMET and you also spent some time without an ECAMET. Uh, so I don't think that you will be eligible uh, based on your previous residence in Turkey. Uh, you should definitely correct your situation and somehow get a valid uh, residence permit. If you are able to leave the country, I would suggest uh, you to uh, leave Turkey and come back because otherwise, uh, when you make a new application, the Gürtü Dersi will say you have violated the rules of uh, residency and visa, you, you violated the visa period and residence permit period for more than 10 days. And because of that, they will probably reject your new applications. However, when you get petitions, the Gürtü Dersi might say that, okay, um, I first 
rejected your previous applications, but since you explained the situation, I now accept it. If they somehow accept your previous applications, then your uh, situation will be uh, fixed. But I don't, I, I don't see it likely because GeoGRC uh, likes to create problems in these situations. The most straightforward method is to uh, leave the country and come back as soon as possible. When you come back, you somehow start from fresh. And when you start from fresh, you, you should spend first five years again, then you will apply for a residence permit. Uh, for nationality, I'm sorry. A lot of great questions. Based on, based on the uh, residence permit. Yeah. OK. Um, now we would like to give the floor to Ibrahim. Uh, Ibrahim has helped a lot of people in terms of resident permit. So I might be able to say he's as good as you in terms of this. So he has helped a lot of students, a lot of other people, foreigners and so on, to get the residence and other things as well. He's a good friend of ours. Ibrahim, can you join us? Yes, yeah, alaikum. alaikum. Um Sorry, I'm just... <laughs> Baggy is just um, <laughs> um so my thank you very much for this um great evening. Um I'm very I'm, I'm very sure everyone has learned a lot today, even me as well. Um I want to ask this question. If you are a student and you graduated from the university and you are entitled to have probably like six months economic or one year yeah. economic applying, but in some cases they deny people. Um can the person get a lawyer? in order to get the comment, is it advisable or the best should just leave? Uh, yeah, actually, um, I tried to uh, talk less about problems and more about the process as it, as it is written on the paper. But uh, as you said, although you are entitled to make an application for short-term ECAMET after you graduate, uh, you can after you graduate, you can make a new application in six months and you are allowed to be in Turkey for six months. Uh, if they reject the application, you, you can definitely uh, consult to a lawyer. And if, if they do not have a valid base for rejection, then you can uh, file a lawsuit and you might have a chance to win the case and then uh, continue the, your residence permit. Because um, the reason why I ask is that um, in the case where you don't win the case, um, you know, when you're leaving the country, they, they see you as somebody that, um, um, that go against the law of the country. So either they charge you some amount, some certain amount to leave. So that's what I'm asking if it's advisable to get I, the law. I think I lost uh, the conversation. I, I couldn't catch it. Can you uh, repeat that? Yeah, what I ask is that... Um, in some cases, when you, when you get a lawyer, you might not even have the comment. Yeah. So when you are leaving the country, they see you as someone who has go against the law. So they will, they will either charge you some, um, some fee or they deport you. So which one is advisable? After they denied you, should you just leave or you get a lawyer? Actually, uh, you can get a lawyer, but uh, filing a lawsuit is not always a solution uh, because even if you uh, win the lawsuit, it takes a long time for one year. And during that period, uh, you won't have a residence permit. And after you win the lawsuit, uh, you go to get to the RSC and you make a new application generally. Uh, and they say that you violated uh, ECAMET rules during the term of the lawsuit. So I would suggest if you have the chance, you can just leave the country. Uh, if you have the grants, you can make an application for humanitarian residence permit during th that period. And it will allow you to stay in the country during the term of the lawsuit. Yeah, also... In the lawsuit, you can uh, 
make an application to the court for an interim injection, which says uh, that you will be uh, allowed to stay in Turkey during the term of the lawsuit. But generally, the courts are reluctant to give such decisions. Um, I guess um, I'm muted. No. Okay. Um, sorry, I have one, like one more two questions. Um, sure. The second question is, there are some period where the government announces like people who doesn't have resident permit can apply for resident permit. Um, I want to ask you, um, is there a particular years or there, um, how many years interval do they announce that? Uh, it depends. It's uh, actually, there is no such rule for that. Uh, as I said, sometimes Gucci DRC decides to give uh, residence permits for a certain group of people, as I uh, mentioned, Uyghur people. Or for example, sometimes they do not accept the humanitarian residence permit applications of Egyptians or Turkmenistan people from Turkmenistan, but from time to time, they announce that they will now accept them. Interesting. So there is no certain period, actually. You should just uh, follow the news, follow their uh, announcements. I cannot uh, tell a rule about that. Yes, thank you so much. Um, my mm -hmm. last question is about recently the police have been going around and um, when they see maybe foreigners, they can stop you on the way, ask yeah. for your permit. If you don't have your card with you, they don't want to listen to any other thing. You might have it at home. They just take it to their uh, to their station. Yeah, um, for the station. I've, yeah, I've seen different cases where people use like three, four days in the station uh, before they can clear them. Is there um, a way that um, the person can you know sue the police because we have seen so many people staying like one week, two weeks without crime? They didn't commit any crime just because they don't hold their equipment with them. Uh, it's totally against the law. And as a lawyer, I'm very angry about that procedure. And I, I actually practiced, uh, I, I actually witnessed this myself as well uh, regarding a few of our, our clients. Uh, do the police does not have um, any authority to do that, actually, uh, but they do. And I actually filed a complaint about uh, this situation uh, in, for a case in which they held my, uh, held one of my clients in the police station for more than four days uh, without any grounds and but the prosecutor's office does not um, actually uh, prosecute the police, actually. <laughs> they just reject all the applications, in my experience. This is uh, an unofficial authority given to the police by uh, Turkish government, unfortunately. Uh, if you face or if your friends face any such situation, uh, Gucci DRC, if, if, if you have a lawyer and if you insist on trying the legal ways, they generally release you within one or two days. But there are lots of cases where they keep people more than that as well. Thank you so much. Sir. You're welcome. And unfortunately, uh, Gucci DRC, uh, as I mentioned before, does not always follow the rules uh, issued for them. And if even if you have committed no crime, even if you have no criminal records, if somehow uh, you are related with the police and if somehow your name is on a prosecution file, then Gucci Darcy might decide to cancel your uh, residence permit uh, and in that case, the only thing you can do is to file a lawsuit against that, which we generally do. 
Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, based of, uh, uh, sorry, based on the last questions Ibrahim asked, uh, Mr. Ahmed also, Arslan wants to uh, have an input. So if you can join us. That would be helpful. Yeah. Because he's experienced uh, in uh, the criminal procedure more than me, to be oh, honest. It's impressive. <laughs> Hello. Assalamu uh, alaikum, everyone. I'm very happy to see everyone. I'm very uh, pleased to see you all here. Uh, we're going to, in, in the future episodes of this series, we're going to talk more about this, about how to deal with the police in Turkey. Uh, but one important thing here uh, is that you, you, the police cannot take you to, into custody without a criminal charge, but you do have to uh, prove who you are. You would have to have your ID or your passport or whatever documents that you might have to prove your identity. If you do not have such documents, they are legally entitled to take you into custody. Uh, so that is what that is very important for you to carry your residence permit on, on yourselves all the time. And uh, if you have the chance, your passport. And you can generally ask for them to notify the embassy, in the, notify your embassy in Turkey, and they will generally be helpful. Uh, uh, I wouldn't say that for Syrians, unfortunately, but for a lot of countries, they will be helpful. And uh, I would definitely, if you're dealing with the police, if they're telling you anything or asking you something, you don't have to talk to them. And in that case, I would definitely advise you to uh, call someone, call a lawyer for, for them to show up. They might not always help, but they will still uh, help you understand the situation that you are in. And another thing is do not sign anything. If you don't know what is on the paper, do not sign it. Uh, you, it. You don't have to be on the good side of the police in, in this sense. I mean, it's more risky to sign whatever they're saying, just, just to stay on, on, their, on their good side. Because in general, in general, I would say the police, uh, if they're stopping you and they, they want to take you into custody, uh, they're not your friend in that case. So I would definitely advise you to call a lawyer. And this is what I have to say about this. Okay, thank you. Um, so now I've asked a few questions. If, if you want, you can join us on this. I think Ibrahim is asking something. I think. Ibrahim is asking. Yeah, I saw him speak, but uh, I couldn't hear him. I think he's muted. Ibrahim, do you have an input? Do you want to ask another thing? Do you have a follow up? <laughs> In, in the uh, sorry, can you hear me now? Yes. In the case where the police force you to sign, because I've seen that as well, where um, we have some friends who are forced to sign, uh, they don't want to, but the, because they don't speak, many of them do speak Turkish. They they actually sign the um, the document. In some cases, then they were deported because they didn't know what they were signing. Mm -hmm. If if there is a deport if they're going through if you're going through a deportation, I will know more about this. Uh, you have to file a lawsuit, and as soon as you file the lawsuit, uh, they cannot deport you. The lawsuit will immediately stop the proceeding. Uh, so if you go willingly on the plane, they will send you away. But if you don't, they can't. Uh, in that case, you have to file a lawsuit and definitely uh, have a lawyer in your phone. And uh, I mean, they're not going to beat you up. They're not going to physically force you to sign documents. Just don't. I mean, they might pressure you. They might try to trick you or fool you. But uh, in general, you're not going to be compelled by force. In general, I mean, I've never seen it happen like that. If there is a case like that, that's a definitely a more serious crisis. You can file a lot of lawsuits and uh, their career, careers would, be, would end. Uh, Actually, I wouldn't like to take um, um, the time because uh, I have <laughs> I have a lot of issue with that even me I'm involved as well. So inshallah, I hope in the next um, the next session, inshallah, I hope we'll have more time for the floor. Okay. Thanks so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you, Mr. We have a question from Sana. She's asking if a person just bought a house under the required price, which is 
in Turkey and want to live in the country and does not want to work, can he still get a long-term resident permit just to live in the country? Um, can you repeat it again? Because I'm lost. Sure, it's fine. Uh, Sana is asking a question. If a person bought a house under the requirement price, under two thousand five uh, under two uh, hundred fifty thousand dollars, yeah, say fifty or just a hundred thousand dollars, can still this person get a long resident permit? Long term. Yes, a uh, long term residence permit does not have anything to do with uh, investment. It only it is only related uh, with residing in Turkey for more than eight years. Yeah. And I guess we already discussed about this. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, um, Lukman, you raised your hand. Do you have a question to ask? Yes, I have a question. A uh, very quick question. Uh, it's regarding the investment, uh, Mr. Mahmoud and Mr. Rahman. Um, let's say, yeah, I have a couple of friends and they want to invest in several properties in Turkey. So let's say the total, um, how do you call that, amount of the properties that they plan to buy is around $250,000, right? Yes. Uh, let's say they buy like around two, like, you know, two, two houses. Uh, but they don't want to, they don't want, to how do you call that? Um, to proceed with this thing, but they asked me to represent them. So, do I need to prove the power of attorney, like in behalf of them, or can I just use this advantage to apply for, let's say, you know, nationality, or like you know, let's say they put it under my name, right? And I'm going to, I'm going to be the one who will take care of the houses. So, do I have to provide like you know, another extra legal documents, or how's it going to be? If I understand this correctly, they're going to buy the properties under your name. Yeah. Uh, they yeah. just want a property. They don't want uh, citizenship. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, they can put it in your name. And in order to apply for the citizenship, you're going to have to apply to the uh, real estate registry. And they're going to put a ban on the property. And it can't be sold for three years. Okay. Uh, okay. But other than that, you can apply for the, for the citizenship, and after that period, you can transfer their properties back to them. Uh, and it's also regarding uh, Sena's previous question. Um, I think she's referring to the you know the long term permit instead of nationality. Uh, so maybe some people that cannot have multiple nationalities. So that's why is it possible if we have the properties like two hundred fifty thousand, can we get the long term permit instead of nationality? Uh, actually, as far as I know, no. But uh, you can apply for residence permit uh, for uh, for uh, nationality purposes, and it will be valid for one year. And also, if you have a family member uh, who has a national who, who is able to get dual nationality, then they can get the nationality and you can get uh, a long-term ECAMAT without any term. But if you are the one buying the property, uh, you cannot get a long-term ECAMAT based on that ground. Uh, we do have a regulation about uh, the people who who would like to invest in Turkey, do business with Turkey, but does not want to get uh, Turkish citizenship. Uh, the government called it uh, the turquoise card, but yes. uh, the regulation is announced, but it's not in practice yet. But in the following years, they might uh, start to give it uh, to people. And according to that regulation, uh, you will be able to get a uh, long-term ECAMET long-term residence permit if you buy a property okay but as far as i know uh right now you cannot do that okay thank you i think i've heard of this turquoise card actually all right thank you very much okay um there is another question from uh, Luai. if i left the country more than six months Will there be any chance for me to apply for the nationality? 
if you, I mean, uh, we are talking about nationality application based on five years residency. Am I correct? I, he didn't specify, he didn't mention. Let's assume that. Uh, if you are talking about, uh, okay, lawyer says yes, it is. No, uh, the answer is no, unfortunately. Uh, if you come back after six months uh, of living outside Turkey, uh, then they will start to count uh, your residence days from the beginning. So you will have to uh, wait for another five years. I see. Okay. It, I guess there's another question in the chat. Yes. And Faisal asked the same question that we have previously uh, asked. He has uh, he has been staying here for four years now, and in next July he is going to be eligible to continue or finish the fifth year. Uh, as work resident permit. He has to wait until uh, next July because anything can happen until that time. Um, just last few questions and then we'll be done. Okay, Nick, so Faisal has to uh, wait until next July. Okay, makes sense. Uh, the question is, what if you started the application for the nationality based on marriage and then the marriage broke apart and started the divorce papers? What does happen to the nationality progress? Uh, you mean before the end of the process? Yes. Say so started the process and after that, they... There's, there is a specific term for this uh, in the regulation. Uh, let me check from that and give the exact answer. Um, there are some detailed regulations about regarding what will happen uh, if one of the supposes die before the end of the process, but I should check about divorce as well. Okay. Would, uh, would you please tell us about that particular case you just mentioned? What other regulations are? Uh, okay. Then again, I'm going to read from the regulation. By the way, did we answer Sarah's question yet? Whose question? Sarah. Yes, Sarah asked the question and then she asked another question I'm gonna ask now. Okay. Uh, maybe I can send this answer as an email uh, if you can write your email because um, right now I'm trying to find the answer from a complicated regulation. Yes, we, we're going to put your contact information at the end. So yeah, to be honest, it never came up to me until now. Generally, the, uh, our clients continue their marriage. <laughs> I, I had not seen it happen either, but uh, I think it's better to reply in email, like Mahmoud said, but as far as I understand, okay. as far as I remember from school, they are able to apply for a short-term application if they divorce during that period. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's true, but I, I, the question is what will happen to the application for the procedure? Uh, in my general knowledge, I can say that uh, as of the date of the application, they are entitled for Turkish nationality. If they have a real marriage between them and if they divorce, then uh, probably he or she is going to get the citizenship. That's my uh, general knowledge, but I... As I said, these are detailedly regulated under the regulation. 
and it's better to answer with an email. Okay. Okay. Um, I think this will be our last question. Then we'll wrap up. Uh, okay. What if a person, in terms of nationality, is studied in Turkey, finished, say, the four years, then he left the country for holidays, while he was out, his resident permits expired or finished, okay. then he came back with a visa to continue uh, different studies and he wants to apply after also applying for work. Will still will he be eligible to get the nationality? Uh, if the whole day period, if the period he spent outside Turkey is not uh, more than six months, then he can apply. It's even if it expired while he was out. Uh, even if uh, no, it should be continuous. It should be continuous. Yeah. Okay. What if, in, in a similar case, what if um, instead of traveling or being expired out, if uh, I've had some friends who, for instance, uh, the resident ID has changed, will they still be eligible to apply? Uh, it shouldn't affect. If you can prove that you are the same person, then it won't be a problem. Okay. Um, if you have any final remarks, uh, anything to say, Mr. Mahmoud, Mr. Ahmed? Uh, thank you very much to, for these valuable uh, questions. Each case is different. And to be honest, Gertrudarisi reacts different from time to time. And I personally know the uh, details that I generally face with. Uh, maybe if if you feel like uh, any of your questions is not completely answered, please feel free to send us an email and we will definitely answer that uh, as we will do for um, who, uh, who was he uh, or she? Uh, uh, I couldn't I couldn't get the name, but we will make sure to uh, send you information okay. and also we'll put it at the end of the screen, at the end of the session. So okay. everybody, uh, if they could take a screenshot to write it down on a paper to stay in touch with you. Um, okay. For thank the you next, sure. thank you, thank you, thank you for thank you for giving us the time. Thank you for helping with this. We are grateful for you, and we would like to we'd like to tell everyone within the next four sessions we'll have also discussed police uh, contracts and businesses insurances. Uh, in Turkey. So guys, please stay tuned and join us in the next few days as well, a few, few weeks, few sessions. Thank you, Mr. Mahmoud, and thank you, Mr. Rahman. And thank, thank you, everyone. For coming. Thank, thank you Mahmoud. for organizing this beautiful event. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone, for joining the session. Uh, as you will see in the screen now, you will have the information of Mr. Ahmed and Mr. Mahmoud and the organization ACL Istanbul, the firm. Um, write it down or take a screenshot and uh, contact them whenever you feel like, whenever you need help.